Hi guys, welcome to this session on Microsoft Access. In this module, I want to have a look at how you can create a report for a shop database. This is part three of the shop database series. So just to recap, this is the objects that we have at the moment, or these are the objects. Query sales is just a query pulling some tables together. If I have a look at the design of that, you can see how that sits. So I've pulled in various fields and there's a calculation there working out what the order value is. Now if I close this down and use this as my base for a report, if I click on create and then go to straight away to report, that will generate a report which I don't like because it's just got the same customer repeating over and over again there. So that's not what I want to do. Close that one down. No. So if I go to report and go to the report wizard, report wizard, I can follow the wizard through, take everything across and next, uh, I don't want to group by stock, I want to group by customer name, take that across, next, I come to this summary options, I'm leaving everything ascended, but summary options will allow you to um, select whether you want to sum order value or not, I will and I'll have it as a percentage, click OK, follow it through, I want this landscape, keep going and then you give it a name I'll just put RPT in front of this because I'm not going to save it and then finish and then you get each person Ann Jones, Janet Carr, Paul Reed, and Steve Saxton with everything that they've sold with the percentage of the total sales and there's two pages here the last person sitting on the second page now that's okay, this one hasn't been truncated because quite often when you go through the wizard some of these fields are truncated but what I want to do is recreate this manually and that's how I would do it normally. If I close this down and don't save it, what I'm going to do is create a report in design and when you do that you have to attach it. So I've got the property sheet on to this query. So there it is. Then you can go to the fields and the fields are sitting there like so. But before I bring the fields on, I want to do grouping because I want to group it by customer name. So you click the group and sort down there and then add a group. So customer name. So you get a customer name header, but I also want a customer name footer. So you follow this along where it says more and you go with header section where it says without you go with footer section and it gives you that now this is quite a big area there so I'm just going to bring this up a little bit so if I put customer name into the customer header section so I don't need the title the label just push that over there a bit and what I'm going to do on that is just format that to stand out a little bit and maybe make it a different color dark blue and a different size let's make it 14 so it stands up a little bit. Let's have a look at that. So you need to keep looking while you're doing this. You need to keep looking at what it looks like. So there's the customers. Uh, I don't like these boxes either. So I'll get rid of that in a minute. I've gone back to design. I can just push that space there. I might push it into the corner a little bit. You can fill the box in as well over the color if you so wish. Now the details you now need to pull on. So if you pull on each of these fields Again, you don't need to have the labels if you don't want. So if I go stock and then quantity, get rid of quantity, just position that where you want it to go next to it. And then order value, order value, get rid of the label, push order value up there. You might need to mess about with that one. Date of sale, bring that on, delete that. Push that up there, date of sale. Now move this up a little bit. That's the detail. Let's have a look. So that gives you the detail of everybody's sales. If I come down a bit to mine, you see the big gap there. If I go back into design, that's this space here. If I get rid of that, have a look. Scroll down, you can see now it's, it's all sitting next to each other come back into design. Now I want to do some calculations and I'm going to do those in the customer name footer 
and to do calculations in access you need the AB box so the straw rectangle and then all I'm doing in there is equal sum with a normal open bracket and then you have to refer to in this case the order value field which has to go into square brackets order value so order value in square brackets and then close the sum click away from that have a look see if it's worked So 10, 10, yeah, 6, 1, 7. So it's worked, but it's not formatted to pounds. So I need to click on that, go into the property sheet and format to currency. And this needs to say departmental or customer total, not departmental, customer total with a space because it's going to be a label let's have a look customer total there we go we've got the, the box there like so now if you want a report total what you have to do is if you right click on where it says customer footer or page footer you can select report footer and you get the same box coming at the bottom to say report as opposed to all these ones and if I copy that formula control C copy paste it into the report footer change the label to just total or shop total and then you can just move that back over here have a look that should pick up at the bottom the total sales for whatever period this is bear in mind this is based on this query you could have this based on a parameter query that would isolate individual customers or isolate dates you could use uh, a between and and query that would let you select set date ranges so you could have it for the month and that would be the monthly total or the quarter quarter the total etc etc but you'd have to adjust this query to pick that up go back into design on this one so now i want another calculation in here what's the average sales again it's going to be a B draw me a little rectangle so the function is going to be exactly the same as that one except it's going to be average equals AVG not the word average as Excel would be still looking at order value square brackets close the normal brackets and format that straight away to currency so type it currency in there and customer average sales you might not want to know this but customer average spell that right and then just adjust that a little bit to the left we'll sort this out in a bit have a look so customer average is 10 10 and 10 that's correct seven yeah, two there that's the average three pound fifty and so on and so on and then we build it up let's go back into this so now what i need to do is i want to name this because i want to work out the percentage of the total sales so i'm going to click on this this is the total the grand total and i'm going to name it grand and then I'm going to click on this one and call it just total. And then what I can do now is if I make myself a little space. For, so I need a another AB box down here because I'm going to do in there equals total in square brackets divided by grand in square brackets total divided by grand and then I'm just going to put the percent symbol in there get rid of all that and format 2% go across there percent have a look 12% and that's 25% of the total short totals 83 Okay, so that works. 
So now basically I need to tidy this up a little bit and get rid of some of these boxes. Go back in there. So first of all, let's just see if we can stack these up. So set them like that and go to arrange and select stack. Just makes them a bit tidier. And then I don't want the borders on there. So you've got border style. You can set that to transparent and then have a look. Go back to report design view. So that's got rid of the borders around that. And you can probably do the same on these. So if I go back into design and just highlight this row and then pick out the um, border style transparent for that. I don't need to set that up, I think that's okay. And then I don't want a border on there either. So border style transparent and just have a, and this last lot as well down here, transparent border style. And then have a look to see what your report looks like. You might have to put some of those borders back on. That looks okay, actually. So product is okay. You can mess about with the alignment on this one at the bottom because this, this probably needs to be stacked. If I just go into the... No, that's okay, I suppose. So I'll just set this to um, left aligned format. Left and then have a look to see what this looks like down the bottom there is it lined up sort of lined up and you can just mess about with that as well or I could leave it as it is probably need to make the format stand out a little bit more than that so I will make this bolder and bigger and I might actually do a color in the background as well just to stand it out like so and then move, move these down a bit so shop total need to move it across so I can see everything make this a bit bigger by grabbing that little box but this bit once this is done this will just react to whatever you do in your database so this is this is okay to do all of this um, I think everything else is okay report headers where you could put uh, the title your logos and things like that um, you can put date and times up there you've got these options um, under This bit over here, headers and footers, logo, title, date and time. I will put date and time on and I'll leave it as that. Okay. And then it puts it at the top in the report header. And then you've got page numbers, which will go wherever you tell it to go, actually. Page number of numbers, bottom of the page, center. Okay. Goes in the page footer, so that'll be on every page. There's only one page, I think. There might be two pages. Let's have a look. Take time the report page one of one. Yeah, there's only one page, so everything's looking okay. That's all I want to do on this. So, you spend a lot of time getting this right, but once it's right and looks good with all your branding on, that's the job done. And you can do many, many reports, like I said. So, you would create a report that would allow you to print off Anne Jones sales and perhaps Anne Jones sales as per a day. So, if she's got multiple sales, or like this one has multiple sales. What date was that sale? So I want the 16th, so I'll just print it off as of the 16th of Feb, and then it would just be one item for one person. It's up to you, but you'd have to create multiple queries for that to happen. So that's all I want to talk about in this little video, so hopefully that was of use. Thank you for your time, and I'll catch you on the next one.